Hello. I have uh, neglected this channel long enough. Um, I got a book today, which I'm very proud of. 501 must-see movies. Now, when I bought this, uh, I was alone at Kohl's. It's 15 bucks right now at Kohl's. This is Canada price. I'm not sure about the American version. I guess it would be chapters or... Anyways, it's the Plum, the Plum Rewards card dealy. Um, I made an agreement with Yvonne before I even opened this, and that is this. If one of us has seen a movie that is in the must-see, and the other has not, we cannot say no to watching it. Because this book is saying you must see these 501 movies. And the reason I got it is, you know, it's 15 bucks, so it's about half price, and it's got recent movies on here. It's got Dallas Buyers Club, which I've never seen, The Revenant, which I've never seen. I I think for me, Leonardo DiCaprio has been ruined by two things. Um, Dad's Dad, Dad's Dad, and Gilbert Grape. And, um, and the fact he screams all the time. Once you realize that in every movie it's just him, Wah! it's it gets... It gets kind of hard to watch them because it's, it's one of those things where if you, if you have anybody in your life that they, they get mad all the time, so eventually you kind of laugh at it. That's kind of where I'm at with him. Uh, the, the best example I can think from a movie that I've laughed at a person when they get angry is Keanu Reeves. Um, the Devil's Advocate is a pretty iffy movie. It's not a great movie. Um, and if you watch it and think it's a great movie, you're, you're wrong. Uh, it stars Keanu Reeves and... Al Pacino, and this was before Pacino was ruined by being in things like Jack and Jill and uh, Righteous Kill, and some of the crap he's made in the last 10 years. This was when Pacino was still good. Uh, Pacino is the devil in the movie, because of course he is, and uh, Keanu plays his lawyer. As Keanu seems exactly like a guy who'd go through law school. This is totally bogus. Anyways, um, there's a scene in the movie where he gets angry and threatens Pacino, and I don't know if I've ever laughed harder at an unintentionally funny scene in a movie than I did in that one. DiCaprio brings out that same kind of laughter. The, are you kidding me? Kind of laughter. Uh, it, I didn't feel that as much with The Departed, but I felt that somewhat in Inception in certain points. And I think that's why I haven't watched Wolf of Wall Street. So, let's look through. This is organized by genre. And I don't agree with some of it. That's the funny part. I don't agree with some of it myself. Uh, let's see. Horror. What a shock. I look at horror movies, right? But for those of you who don't have this, let's go through the horror movies. Nosferatu from 1922. I've watched it. Um, the original version, I'm not a huge fan of. Uh, they did a recut version with all the music done by Typo Negative. Fantastic. Uh, typo negative is fantastic. Again, if, if you disagree with me, you're wrong. I don't mind you being wrong. But Nosferatu with typo negative music is fantastic. Uh, the, the original Phantom of the Opera, eh, I couldn't get through it. Freaks. Freaks from 1932 is genuinely a creepy movie. Freaks is genuinely very creepy. And if you see it on your television, ignore that it's black and white. Ignore that it's really old and watch it and, and it's creepy and weird. And you're disturbed, and sometimes you're not quite sure why, but you're disturbed. Uh, the original King Kong, it's a fun movie. You can sit, have a beer, watch King Kong, it's fun. Bride of Frankenstein, I've never seen Bride of Frankenstein. I know, I know, I've never seen it. Uh, Dead of Night, 1945, I've never seen that. Les Diabolique, 1955, I haven't seen that either. Uh, the original Dracula, of course I've seen that with Peter Cushing, before he was Grand Moff Tarkin. Uh, the original Psycho, yes, and if you haven't seen it, you have to. Uh, 1960, Peeping Tom, I've never seen it, and I'm not sure that I want to see it. So again, if you're watching this and you're like, oh, these movies he's mentioning, he's got to see them, let me know uh, in the comments why, why I should watch these movies that I haven't seen. Village of the Damned, the original is very good. Uh, the remake with Christopher Reeves was good, too. Um, I think Village of the Damned should have been, like, crossed with the Look Who's Talking movies, because they're equally creepy. Um, and then maybe they would have made the Look Who's Talking movies entertaining. 
Um, there's people who are going to watch this and be like, I like the Look Who's Talking movies. People can be wrong. I get it. Uh, the Birds. Alfred Hitchcock, of course, can be in here multiple times. Uh, the Birds is pretty good. Um, the, the best thing, best way to watch The Birds is after watching the movie that details Hitchcock's love of Tippi Hedren and his obsession with her, his uncomfortable obsession with her. And then you start to understand why The Birds is this big Tippi Hedren star vehicle. It didn't really work out all that great for her after, but The Birds was good. Uh, the Haunting, 1963. I've never seen it. Never seen it. Uh, Rosemary's Baby is creepy. Uh, if you can handle a Roman Polanski film, uh, Roman Polanski is not a good man. I don't think you'd find anybody right now that could say he is, but it's a good movie. It's not a great movie. I honestly don't... I don't mind Rosemary's Baby, but I'm not that sold on it. There are parts of it where I thought it kind of dragged, and there's definitely some weird stuff in it. Not for the religious folk. Uh, Night of the Living Dead. It's the original Night of the Living Dead. Uh, Yvonne has not seen it, so I was tickled because it means we can watch it together. Um, the original Night of the Living Dead in black and white is creepy. Uh, it, there's, there's some gore, but it's mainly everything's off screen because Romero was working on a very limited budget, and it shows. The original Exorcist, well, I'm not watching that again. <laughs> The Exorcist was the movie when I was a little kid that, uh, I'm not that little, I was just in my early teens, and they'd have it on TV, and I could watch like two minutes and turn away, two minutes and turn away, and I'd, I'd turn the channel back and go, oh god, they're going back in the bedroom, and I remember saying out loud, why do you keep going back in the bedroom, just lock the door and walk away, it'll fix it, it'll fix itself, lock the door, uh, Don't Look Now, which stars Donald Sutherland, I was never able to get through that one, um, I remember starting that with my ex-wife and we never got through it. Uh, the original Wicker Man, uh, not the one starring Nicolas Cage. The bees, they're in my eyes! Uh, the one starring Nicolas Cage is fantastic, unintentionally. Um, I, I can't recommend the, the, the Nicolas Cage version more more than, 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 I, than I have previously, and than I am right now. There, You will never find a movie where you laugh at things and go, oh god, I laughed at that, I shouldn't have laughed at that. As much as Wicker Man, you laugh at a kid being run over by a train, and you laugh at him punching women in the face. Because Nicolas Cage punching somebody in the face is awesome enough, but it is hilarious when it's a young girl. And in the scene before, he was like befriending her, and then in the next scene, it's like, oh, I'm Nick Cage, sorry, and he just plows her. And it's, it's really funny. Okay, but that's not... The one that's in here. The Wicker Man that's in here is from 1973, and I've never seen it. Uh, the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Here's the funny thing. Um, Yvonne thinks it's creepy. Won't watch it because she thinks it's scary. I won't watch it because I think it's boring. I watched the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Oh, I was about 16. I watched it with my friend Dave because um, it was the 80s. We all had friends named Dave. And uh, I, we, we fast-forwarded through it. We got to about the halfway mark of the movie, and we were falling asleep. And I was like, hit the fast-forward button. And so we are just visually scanning fast-forward, and then we hit... Oh, no, she's still screaming and running through the woods. Da, 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 can't see anything. Do, 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 can't see anything. Da, da. It was just... I don't see it. I know everybody kind of talks, talks about what a great movie it is. I don't see a, a masterpiece. I just see some shock value stuff, and then boredom hits. Uh, Jaws. I get bored during Jaws. Uh, um, and I apologize for saying that because I know people are, are not going to be happy with me for that, but I'm not a fan of Jaws. Um, Jaws the Revenge, though, is so hilariously bad. It's one of those movies you can challenge people to get through. Um, just the, the concept of a shark going for revenge is so amazing. The original, I can understand why people like it, and it's Steven Spielberg, and it's one of his more popular movies, but I just, I find it tedious. Sorry. The original Omen is, it's good. Not great. I, I think it's overrated. I honestly think at Halloween it's on too much, and I think it's overrated. I think there's some some better movies in that same, same vein. Uh, Carrie, the original Carrie, not the remake starring um, Chloe Moritz. The original's fantastic. One of the most iconic horror movies 
and and sad. It's a tragedy. Um, the original Carries is a tragic story. The remake with Chloe Moritz, the only part that they get wrong is that Chloe Moritz is too pretty for the character. I know they try to dress her down and make her dorky, but she's too pretty to be Carrie. Sissy Spacek worked because Sissy Spacek was very pretty as a young girl. There was something different. There's something something weird and quirky. And you could see in that movie that she suited the role as kind of the nerdy kid that the other kids were picking on. I never bought Chloe Moritz in that role. Uh, Eraserhead. I haven't seen Eraserhead. And again, people are going to be banging their heads on the keyboard saying, what? This guy's a horror buff and he hasn't seen Eraserhead? I haven't seen it. The original Halloween I've seen many, 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 many times. And last Halloween, I got Yvonne to watch it with me, and she was surprised it wasn't what she expected. It's not some gore-filled horror movie. It's There's very little gore at all, and it's mostly just tension. It's just a chase. The entire movie's a chase. Uh, the original Dawn of the Dead's in here, the 1978 uh, George Romero. Uh, Yvonne has not seen that one. I will cue that up for her at some point. Austin still has it, though. Uh, he borrowed it a while ago, and he still has it. So, but I can usually find it for cheap wherever. It's usually in bins wherever. Uh, it is it is genuinely a creepy movie. I I've only watched it twice, and I I I'll sit through it again for Yvonne. But it's not something that I would repeatedly watch. The Shining, the most fantastic horror movie of all time, not named Evil Dead. The Shining. Uh, the original Friday the 13th, I'm not sure why that's in here other than because it's Friday the 13th. It's the iconic name. The movie is shit. Friday the 13th movies are awful. So when they remade, and I, I talked about this in a video I did quite a while ago on this channel. When they remade the original Friday the 13th and it had Sam from Supernatural being Sam from Supernatural because he can't be another character. Um, I kept waiting, kept waiting for Dean in that movie. It's a much better movie than the original. There are so many things that I'm like, wow, that, that fills in some blanks. That's really good. That's a fantastic character device. There's characters in this compared with the original movie. And then a bunch of horror horror hounds who are not like me said, oh, this movie sucks. I like the originals better. And it's like, why? Okay, the first movie is the only shock is that it's Jason's mother. Uh, two is a retread of the first. It's got... I I have all the movies, okay? But I'm just saying the truth. The third is the worst 3D movie ever, which makes it the best 3D movie ever. Part four is endless gore and boobs. More gore than boobs, but they're both in there. And it features delightfully uh, quirky performances in the movie by uh, Marty McFly's dad in particular. Uh, it's unforgettable, but the most the rest of the movie is very forgettable. Um, part five is a porno, basically with blood in it. Um, it was actually directed by a porn director. Uh, part six is really good, uh, but it's zombie Jason. So it's J Jason's been dead since the end of the fourth part because part five doesn't have Jason in it, which made it a lot of people angry. Uh, part six is uh, zombie Jason, which is fantastic. It's Kane Hodder taking the role. Part 7 is fun because it's Jason versus Carrie. You just can't call her Carrie because copyrights. Uh, part 8 is the worst Drek uh, with the Friday the 13th name on it, which is saying something because Part 9 was Jason Goes to Hell, which is the Jason Slug movie. And I don't know any other way to describe it other than the Jason Slug movie. You have to see it to believe it. Part 10 was Jason X, which is Jason fighting in space and in the future. Yes, it's Jason in space. You don't, you, you're not hearing things, it's Jason in space. Uh, part 11 then was Freddy vs. Jason, which is what we all wanted to see anyways. Uh, so that's the whole series. And then they remade it, and the remake was fantastic. This just tasks you to watch the original movie. And I might be able to talk him on into watching the original movie. I'd have to talk myself into watching the original movie too, though. Because there's no character development. Alright. And some of the characters are so awful. The, the guy who's supposed to be the practical joker, and he's just racist and stupid, it's awful. His, his oh, it's just god-awful. Awful. Gotta see it. Uh, the Fog. This is the one with Adrian Barbeau, Jamie Lee Curtis, and Janet Lee. 
1980. A good movie, not great. I honestly don't think it's great. This is great. Okay. That's how werewolves are supposed to look when they're transforming. The CGI werewolf crap that you have now, God's sake. That's American Werewolf in London. And it is one of the best dark comedies. I consider it a dark comedy myself. It's one of the best dark comedies I've ever seen. Easily. Uh, the Thing. So this is the 1982 John Carpenter. It's technically a remake of an old movie that was remade again a few years ago. The remake from a few years ago actually is really, really good. Uh, the Thing by John Carpenter is genuinely horrifying. Just flat out horrifying. Uh, some of the stuff that's in it is just, it's impossible to get it out of your brain. And you really wish you didn't watch it, but you watch it again. And you're no less scared the second time you watch the movie than the first, because you know what's coming now, and it's even more terrifying when you know what's coming. That's the sign of a good horror movie. Uh, Poltergeist is in here. Poltergeist is okay. It's not as scary now as it was when it was made, and the remake is awful. Couldn't even get through it. Uh, the original Nightmare on Elm Street is fantastic. It's a 5 out of 5. Wonderful movie. Ignore Part 2. Watch Part 3. Watch Part 4. And then skip the rest till Freddy vs. Jason. Except New Nightmare. Wes Craven's New Nightmare is a fantastic movie. I can't forget that one. Uh, the Fly. David Cronenberg, 1986. That is a fantastic movie. I haven't watched it again because it's one of those movies you really enjoy, but you watch it once. Evil Dead 2. I have it. Love it. Um, Yvonne hasn't watched it. Um, I think I'm going to have to plug this in now that this, movie, this book tells her she has to watch it. Uh, wow. I am so excited to share it with her. It is so... Um, I've called it the perfect horror movie, and I'm, I'm torn between the perfect horror movie being Evil Dead 2 or the Evil Dead remake, and, and I'm, I'm, I can see both sides of my argument on it. I, I don't think there's a wrong answer. I think they're both the perfect horror movie. Uh, Angel Heart stars Mickey Rourke, Robert De Niro, Lisa Bonet. I started watching that the other, like, a few months ago, and I passed out watching it. I haven't watched it before. I think I should. Misery. Misery is fantastic. Oh, man, I love Misery. Uh, Tremors. Tremors is cute. Uh, Kevin Bacon. The, the worms under the under the ground. It's cute. It's got its moments. Silence of the Lambs, I don't like. I like Manhunter better. So if you've watched Silence of the Lambs and you like Hannibal Lecter, seek out a movie starring William Peterson called Manhunter. It is fantastic. I own it. Um, at some point in time, I may watch it uh, here because it's really, really well done. And and it's William Peterson's role in it is just fantastic. Just amazing. Uh, Scream. Scream's in here in 1996. I saw that one in the theater. Great movie. Uh, Ringu. So this is not The Ring. This is the Japanese original from 1998. Give it some respect. Uh, the original Japanese version is good. I like the American one just as much. Sorry, sorry. Uh, the Sixth Sense. Sixth Sense has been so overplayed. It was good at the time. Let's move on. I also think that because M. Night Shyamalan tried to double down on the twists from The Sixth Sense, that it detracts from the wonders of The Sixth Sense, that its genius disappears when you realize it was probably a one-off genius move on his part. Uh, the Blair Witch Project, the original from 1999. This is the reason that the Paranormal Activity movies exist. This is the reason that the steady cam, single cam movies exist. I'm sorry. Sounds Blair Witch Project was good when it came out. It's very dated now. I can't get through it. And I have no interest in seeing the remake. Uh, Audition, this is a Japanese horror movie. I haven't watched it. Because from what I understand, it seems... Like, it would be very hard to get through. I don't know that I could do it. Uh, the Others, starring Nicole Kidman. What a fun movie the first time you watch it. Fun as in, oh my god. You have, there's movies that, that you have that oh my god moment with. And The Others, you have that oh my god moment. And, and it's one of those things like, why didn't I notice that before? Why didn't I realize what was going on? Oh my god, I'm so dumb. Uh, 28 Days Later. Danny Boyle. Oh, Yvonne hasn't seen 28 Days Later. Oh my god. Oh, oh wow. I have it. Of course I have it. I 
love 28 Days Later. 28 Weeks Later is kind of shit. But 28 Days Later is fantastic. So terrifying. Because the infection is done. There's no, oh, I'm bit. Oh, I'm going to turn. No, no, no. It's infect, infected blood gets in your eye. Done. You turn. And then turn, turn, turn. See, one infected gets in a room where everybody else is fine. And 20 seconds later, it's chaos. Half the room's been turned already. It's just amazing. Uh, the original Saw movie, I she's I think she's seen that. And I, I wouldn't watch it again. Uh, the Descent. I don't like The Descent. Can somebody please explain to me why people like The Descent? And not only that, the original ending for The Descent, the survivor dies. She dies. And I like that ending much better than the Hollywood bullshit they tacked on. She's climbing down. How can she get out when she's climbing down? She's in a tunnel. The only way to climb down and get out would be if she goes through the Earth's core and comes out somewhere in the ocean. You don't actually go to China. That's not how it works. Um, the Orphanage, I haven't seen. It's a Mexican movie. I wanted to. Uh, let the right one in. So the American version is called Let Me In. It's basically a shot-for-shot shot re remake of Let the Right One In. They're both great. You can't go wrong. They're both amazing. Drag Me to Hell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Sam Raimi, fantastic. Uh, my son cannot watch that movie to this day. Uh, gave him nightmares beyond all belief. Uh, it was... Uh, it was one movie that I could threaten to put on if I wanted to do chores. It was a movie I could threaten to put on if I wanted to be quiet. Because just hearing the movie terrified him. And it came out in 2009, so he was not... He was, he was 10 when it came out. I didn't let him watch it until I think he was about 13. And it terrified him. Because he... I told him, I said, this movie's genuinely scary. Oh, Dad, I don't get scared. I don't get scared. I watched Zombieland. I wasn't scared. I watched Freddy vs. Jason. I wasn't scared. I, and I'm like, no, no. This is different. This is a different beast. It scared him pretty bad. So here's my challenge to you guys. Um, of the movies that this book says you have to watch in the horror section, I'm going to go through other sections of this book, too, in coming days. Uh, which ones have you not seen? Which ones do you think belong in here that aren't in here? Just off off the top of my head, Hellraiser should be in here and isn't. Uh, Phantasm isn't in here either. The Dawn of the Dead remake isn't in here. The Evil Dead remake isn't in here. Um, Wes Craven's New Nightmare isn't in here. Uh, what else in my must-see list isn't in here? Uh, there's other franchises too. The Resident Evil movie, you know what? If you're going to have Friday the 13th in here, which is basically terrible, you might as well have the original Resident Evil movie. A lot of people don't like it. I get that. But it's it's required viewing. Um, to me, anyways. So let me know in the comments below what you guys think. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing through. Uh, I will be talking about science fiction and fantasy next, I think, in this. Because there's some really good movies in there that I've seen. And I will work my thr way through until I get to sections of where I haven't seen anything, like country western. And I'll probably just skip that altogether. Anyways, let me know what you guys think. Uh, which ones do you think are overrated? Which ones do you think are underrated? Like, for me, overrated would be Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Again, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but I, I think it's overrated. Uh, I think the only good Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, the remake with Jessica Biel was okay. I stomached it. And I don't know how much of that was Jessica Biel in her tie-off shirt with her tight jeans. I think a lot of it was the Jessica Biel. Um, and then they did Texas Chainsaw a couple years ago, which featured Alexander Daddario. And I don't know if did, I don't know if Alexandria, Alexandria Daddario was the reason I liked the movie, or was the fact that they kind of make Leatherface a sympathetic character which I thought was a different way of, of playing it. I really, I didn't like the start of it, but once they got towards the end game, I really enjoyed what they did with the, the Texas Chainsaw movie. So again, um, it's not in the must-see in this book. It's not in anybody's must-see list, but if I had to sit through one of, them again, one of them again, I would sit through Texas Chainsaw, but how much of that is because Alexander Daddario is the the best looking woman in Hollywood right now. 
That's a tough list. And I've actually thought about making a video where I discuss who the best looking women are in Hollywood and music. And and that would be tough to do. So that would be involved, you know, coming up with a list and counting it down. And I don't know, I may do that at some point soon. If you've made it to this point of the video, thank you. Um, congratulations on reaching 25 minutes. I do tend to ramble at points in time. I apologize for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is fun. I enjoy talking about movies, and Star Wars didn't come up in this one. Shit, I just did. Okay, uh, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you all again soon.